When we think of a pendulum, we probably think of a mass on the end of a string, which swings backwards and forwards with a constant period, like an old-fashioned clock. In this hands-on activity, we will explore another type of pendulum. We see that if we change the length of this simple pendulum, the period changes with its length. However, if we keep the length the same and add extra mass, we can easily see that the period does not depend on the mass. In fact, the period only depends on the length of the string and the value of the acceleration of gravity, g. In this activity, we will make another type of pendulum which we can change the period of in a different way. We will need some chopsticks, some stones of about the same size, some sticky tape, and some paper clips. Bend a paper clip into a 90 degree angle. and tape chopsticks onto each side. Add stones to the end of the chopsticks and add one more chopstick across in an A shape, fixing it with tape. This is our pendulum. Support the pendulum from another chopstick and experiment with it. How many ways can it oscillate? Is the period the same? There are two ways that this pendulum can swing across the supporting chopstick or along it. We will calculate in this activity why the periods for the transverse and longitudinal directions are different. For the simple pendulum, we can show that the period can be calculated from the equation t equals 2 pi square root l over g. So as the length increases, the period increases. If the shape is complex, such as this club, the period depends on its moment of inertia about the point of suspension. This is why the shape of a baseball bat or golf club is important to the way it feels to the player. The moment of inertia of a weight, a distance L away from the axis of rotation, is ML squared. So we see how the general equation can be used for the case of the simple pendulum or any other pendulum, if we know its moment of inertia. For other pendula, which have different shapes, the period changes, even though they have the same length. For example, for a bar, the period reduces. Now we will calculate the period for the two cases of oscillation that we saw for our two-mass pendulum earlier to explain why the period is different in each direction. Firstly, for swinging around the axis, or transverse oscillation, the moment of inertia is just twice that for a simple pendulum. And we find that the period is 2 pi square root 2L over G cos theta. Secondly, for swinging along the axis, or longitudinal oscillation, the moment of inertia depends on cos theta, and the period is now 2 pi square root 2L cos theta over G. We can find the ratio between the two periods to be 1 over cos theta. So if theta equals 45 degrees, we see that the two periods in the two directions differ by a factor of the square root of 2, with the transverse oscillation slower 
than the longitudinal oscillation. If we make another two pendula, we can see the effect of changing the angle theta. We make two new pendula with theta angles of about 0 degrees and 80 degrees. We now have three pendula. Theta equals about 0 degrees, 45 degrees and 80 degrees. Can you predict which one will have the biggest difference in period between the longitudinal and the transverse oscillations? And which one will have the smallest difference? The factor is 1 over cosine theta. So when the angle theta is small, the factor is about 1. So the periods are the same in the two directions. When theta is 80 degrees, 1 over cosine theta is about 6. So the transverse oscillation is much slower than the longitudinal oscillation. We have seen with this activity how the moment of inertia has a big effect on the way things move. If we know how to find the moment of inertia, we can calculate the period of oscillation of any object. This hands-on activity helps to show the importance of the moment of inertia, and your students should understand it better once they have done the activity for themselves.